Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, really uh, appreciate your being here with us and we apologize for uh, the technical difficulties that caused us to stay uh, to start a little bit late. But um, we are going to be considering today understanding the balance sheet and other financial statements. This is uh, Zoom meeting number three under basic bookkeeping. I hope that uh, you had an opportunity of being with us in the previous two. And uh, what we're gonna do just to get to know each other a little bit better, we're going to just uh, ask two questions, two poll questions. One of them is, have you attended um, the uh, previous uh, sessions before? So maybe if Sharika can put those up, I would appreciate it. Okay, so we've started the poll. Did you attend a previous session? And I'm just gonna allow persons a few more seconds to answer, and then I can let you know the results. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll and let me share the results. So 78% of the audience attended the first session, which was understanding basic accounting terminology and 67% accounting methods and keeping track of your business. Okay. And um, so everybody attended one or the other. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, are you in business? We've launched the poll. Are you in business? Go ahead and answer so we can get to know you better. I'm just gonna give participants a few more seconds so we can get that data in there. And the poll is going to end now. Okay, so 50% of the participants here today are in business and the other 50% are <laughs> not in business. So we have an even split. Nice, nice. Thank you so much, Sharika, I appreciate that. Okay, so um, I'm happy to hear that uh, you have attended the previous sessions, uh, quite a few of you, either one or the other. Uh, please always remember that these sessions are being recorded and that they're going to be available later on on the SBDC uh, uh, website and also the Facebook page under the YouTube uh, channel. They're going to have all of these recordings available. So you can review them, you can go over them again, and you can see whatever which ones you have, may have missed. So today we're gonna to talk also, if you have any questions, we, we're having a little bit of difficulties. Usually I can see when someone raises their hand because of how it is today, I can't. So just let um, either Mary Jo or Sharika know that you have a question and they will let me know and then we can um, take care of that, okay? So just put up with us for today, please. Um, we're gonna consider understanding the balance sheet and other financial statements. The balance sheet, as you can see here, has two sides. In one side, you have your assets, okay? And we're gonna discuss this very uh, thoroughly, but you, get, you have an, an idea here of what is considered assets. You, you know that you have current assets, you have long-term investments. Other things that are assets are property, plants, equipment. This is a, a, a company, a, you have intangible assets, we're gonna talk about that. And we're gonna talk about other assets. Um, then we have, so on the left-hand side, you have the assets and the liabilities, you have it on the right-hand side, you have current liabilities. These are some of the things that are under liabilities or considered liabilities. You have long-term liabilities, and then you have stockholders equity. And this is called the account, uh, accounting equation. So let's talk a little bit about that. The accounting balance sheet is one of the five major financial statements that are used by accountants and business owners. The other major financial statements are the income statement. We're gonna talk about that one today. Statement of comprehensive income, statement of cash flows. We will discuss that one briefly also and statement of stockholders equity. The balance sheet is also referred to as a statement of financial position. This balance sheet basically presents your company's position at the end of a specified date. If we go back to, to um, the 
of the, what the, the description of this balance sheet gives the name of the company, says balance sheet, but it gives you a date, a specific date. So many people call the balance sheet a snapshot of your family, of your uh, financial state, of your finances, of your business. So here is saying December 31st, 20, whatever. Um, it, you may have seen other statements or other financial statements of your company that may say January to December or January through March, uh, April to June. But balance sheet will give you one particular day in time. Okay, one particular day in time. So it's a snapshot of where your business is at that particular time, which is uh, very important. Um, and as, as we're going to see, it, it, it gives you a lot of information and it gives other people a lot of information about you. Um, because the balance sheet informs the reader of a company's financial position as, as of one moment in time, it allows someone like a creditor to see what a company owns as well as what it owes to other parties of the, as of the date indicated in the heading. This is valuable information to the banker, for example, who may want to determine whether or not a company qualifies for additional credit or loans. Others that could be interested in the balance sheet include current investors, potential investors, company management, suppliers, some customers, I found that interesting, competitors, or even government agencies. So, um, as you can see, the balance sheet is a very, very, very important um, financial statement of your company. So, because it's so important, we want to make sure that the information that is in that balance sheet is accurate. The accounting equation that is used in the balance sheet is liabilities plus equity equals asset. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this. Let's, let's discuss this um, in detail. Um, the, um, the balance sheet uses what is called double entry accounting. And this is called T account. What is that? You have debits in one side, you have credits in the other side. A debit signifies an increase in an asset, an expense, and the drawer owner's draw. Increase in an asset, an increase in an expense, and an increase in the owner's draw. A debit can also signify a decrease in liability, revenues, and owner's equity. The credits, a credit is to enter an amount on the right side of the, of the T account, or the uh, uh, double entry accounting. Normal entries to revenue accounts are credits, Liabilities normally have credit balances. So um, usually we, we think of, um, oh, I have a credit in my account. You think, okay, I have, I have more in my account. But we are thinking, we are talking about now accounting. And so we have to think a little bit different about what a debit and a credit is. And we have to also um, think, am I talking about an asset? So a debit and a credit there is gonna be one thing, it's gonna mean one thing. If I'm talking about a liability, a debit and a credit is gonna mean a different thing, okay? So in one, in one aspect, it's gonna mean a, a, an addition and, and a subtraction. In, in the assets, when a debit is an addition, it's a good thing. Uh, a, in an asset, a credit is not necessarily a good thing and vice versa with the, um, with the liability. Double entry accounting or, or double entry bookkeeping is a system that requires that for every business transaction, there must be an amount entered as a debit in one account and the same amount entered as a credit in the other account. So you're gonna have two accounts that are, tar that are impacted by any posting that you make in a double entry accounting, okay? One of, them, one of more of the accounts, and, and that happens, maybe you, um, you write a check and it's an expense, but that check it involves different expenses within that one check. Maybe you bought different things. Maybe you, um, you, used it, you used it in different ways. So for every account, every expense account that is being impacted by that check should be posted in there. So you may have more than one entry for every uh, for each side. Um, 
one of the more accounts must have, so you have uh, you may have a debit and you're gonna have also a credit. Example of a double entry system. Let's assume that a company borrows $10,000 from its bank. Of course, the cash amount account is gonna be increased by $10,000, but also your liability account is going to be increased by 10,000. To increase an asset, a debit entry is required. To increase a liability, a credit entry is required. So yes, you have $10,000 more in your bank, but you also have $10,000 more in debt. So, but it, it, as you can see, it balances. You have the same amount in both places. To increase, a, uh, as, as the name of the, of, the, of the report indicates, a balance sheet, everything must balance. To increase the liability, a credit entry is required. So the account cash will be debited for 10,000 and the liability loans payable will be credited for 10,000. So notice that there's not gonna be a, a, an account that says liability. There's gonna be an account that has a specific name of where you're going to put that debit or that credit, in, in this case, the credit to the liability. And the name for this, because it is a loan that you have obtained from the bank, should be loans payable. So maybe you didn't have uh, a loan before. That means that your bookkeeper will have to set up that new account so that she can track what that money, how that money is used, okay? That's very important. So maybe um, as, as your business grows or as you start a new business, you want to set up your account so that it reflects what your business do, does. If they, maybe they're in, if you buy a, an accounting software in their uh, chart of accounts, there may be things that you never use. So you don't wanna have them there. But then as your business, as you start your business, you're gonna make sure that you are targeting what your liabilities are, what uh, your assets are, what your, where your revenues are coming from, where money is coming from, period, okay? because um, you have sales, but if you have a $10,000 loan, that's not a sale, that's a different type of, of income coming in. I'm sorry. That's a different type of income that is coming in. So you wanna make sure that your chart of accounts reflects everything that, if we go back to the uh, balance sheet, sorry, you're gonna notice here that under liabilities, you have different types of liabilities. These are all accounts that have been set up to capture that information under that liability, okay? Uh, the, the same under assets, you may have um, cash, you, but then you also have accounts receivable. That is an asset, even though you don't have it there yet, but it's money that is coming in, okay? You have other things that can also be cons considered as asset. So you wanna make sure that you ca capture all of that. So when you're looking at a balance sheet, you wanna make sure that you're seeing everything that your company um, it has. A balance sheet is something like a, a resume of your company. Someone who's gonna look at that balance sheet is gonna be able to tell basically where your business is at at that given moment. So it's important that it's accurate. And that is something that as a business owner, I, um, many of you are a business owner or as, an, as a bookkeeper, um, that you make sure that those postings are done correctly, which means that as a bookkeeper, you also need to learn or understand the business that you're working for. What is considered an expense in that business? What is considered an asset in that, in that business? So that then you can post it correctly and then that balance sheet will also reflect the business in a, in a correct manner. Um, it's common for inexpensive yet sophisticated accounting software, such as QuickBooks, which is very uh, known by almost everyone. Uh, there are others, it's not the only one, to use a double entry system, but prompts you for only one account name or number. For example, if the software prepares a check, it will automatically credit the account cash when the check is written. Therefore, the software requires that you enter only the account or accounts to be debited. So you write a check, so that cash, or uh, it's gonna show the bank account where you're getting it from. The check is gonna say who is being written to, but immediately cash is gonna be um, credited. 
and then um, debited, credited, sorry, you're taking away from cash, credited, and then you have a liability, you have an expense. That check signifies an expense. So at the bottom of that check, uh, uh, the picture of the check, it's going to ask you, what is that check all about? How is that check to be distributed as an expense? And again, you can distribute it in different ways. You can either, it's one posting, or it can be posted to different accounts, depending on what it's for. Okay. Any questions so far? I am not hearing anyone, no? Okay. Debits and credits. A debit means left or left side of an account. A credit means right or the right side of an account. Asset accounts, which are on the left side of the equation, you will usually have their balances on the left side of the account, obviously. Since debit means left side, asset accounts will have debit balances and their account balances will be increased with a debit entry. Therefore, a credit entry will decrease the asset's normal debit balance. So when I was saying a check is written, it's written out of cash, so a credit is going to be given to cash, not a, not a debit, because it's, it's decreasing the debit, the balance that is there. Okay, so in an asset account, debit is good, credit is bad, which we all we usually hear the other way around. So keep in mind, we're talking accounting. Liability accounts, which appear on the right side of the equation, you will usually have their balances on the right side. And since credit means right side, a liability account will likely have a credit balance. To decrease that liabilities accounts balance, then a debit entry is needed. Stockholders equity accounts, which also appear on the right side of the accounting equation, will usually have their balances on the right side. So they are in the same side as the liability side. Since credit means right side, a stockholders equity account will likely have a credit balance. To decrease one of these accounts, then a debit entry will be needed. Okay, it's it's. I know this is a lot, and and it can jumble module. That's why we we make sure that you we are, we provide you with the um, the PowerPoint presentation. But basically, it's left and right assets over on the left hand side, uh, liabilities on the right hand side, and what will increase one is going to decrease the other. That's what you have to keep in mind. But you always, any, any, anything that is done in your business that, a, that uh, has to do with your revenues, is, two accounts are gonna be infected. Just keep that always in mind. Two accounts should always be infected. So there are the type, different types of assets. Assets is something that can be owned or controlled. Anything that has an economic value. And it can be tangible that you can actually touch, put your hands on, or it can be intangible, something like um, uh, equity, stockholders equity, that's intangible. It, that can mean many different things, but it's still something that is, uh, that is a part of the assets. Um, cash, petty cash, temporary investments, accounts receivable, remember that accounts receivable was part of your assets. That's why it's so import, important that you are very well aware of what, who owes you what, okay? Because that impacts the bottom line of your business. Inventory, supplies, prepaid insurance, land, land improvements, buildings, of course, equipment, goodwill. Usually asset accounts will have debit balances. So, Debit will increase it, credit will decrease it. These are some of the things that we just discussed, okay? So not just cash, but other things that are tangible as well and things that are intangible. Okay, Carmen? Yes. Um, a statement was, is it, so it's not good for a business to have credit? To have credit in what sense? Because credit is not necessarily bad. Okay. It depends on in what, how, where, and how is that sentence put? If you have credit in your assets, then it means that your assets are being decreased. If you have credit in your uh, liabilities, it means your liabilities are being increased. Okay. So, 
um, it increases one side, it decreases the other because it's always balanced. So, um, but if you're thinking of credit in the sense of someone lending you money and giving you uh, the option to pay on a certain, so that's why I said we, we, we see credit in one way, but we're talking in, in, in accounting terms now. So I want them to think, I want you guys to think that way. To remember, we're talking about accounting. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The liability is defined as a company's leg legal financial debts or obligations that arise during the course of business operations. That's very uh, understandable. Liabilities often have the word, the word payable in the account title, like, such as accounts payable. Liabilities also include amounts received in advance for a future sale or for future services to be performed. Hmm. Interesting, right? Liabilities also include amounts received in advance for a future sale or for a future service to be performed. So let's think about that one for a moment. And then, um, so a liability is, for example, you have, um, you have a contract, you are paid upfront for that contract, okay? But you still have to, to do or provide some kind of service for that. So that service, um, you, you, it's still a liability. As long as you have not provided that service, that amount is a, is a liability for you, okay? Once you have provided that service and you have earned that's that amount, then it becomes an asset for you. Current liabilities include all liabilities that are expected to be paid within a year. So keep that in mind. Current, one year or less, 12, 12 months or less. Any liabilities with a payment period of over a year are considered long-term. Loans usually, unless they're to be paid within a year, are considered long-term. Current liabilities include payments for debts, accounts payable, and other bills that are due to suppliers and other providers. Anything that is, so a liability is an expense, okay? Long-term liabilities refers to all liabilities that are not due in full, in full within the year. This group can include loans, deferred tax obligations, or any pension payments. Um, so any questions on this one? Okay, let's continue. Equity. So remember the equation, the equation. It's assets equals liability plus equity. Okay, that's, that's the, um, the accounting equation. So equity is no attached debt. There's nothing that you owe on this. There's no liabilities to it. To it. Uh, an asset can, that can be sold, something that basically in the case that you have full ownership in it, okay? Um, equity can mean, sorry about the plane. Equity can mean an owner's interest in a personal asset. For example, the owner of a $200,000 house that has a mortgage loan of 75,000 can say that the, he has an equity of 125,000 in that house. Means that the house is worth 200,000, he owns $75,000 of that. So he owns $125,000 of that. So what can he do with that? He can get a second mortgage on that equity. He can get additional monies if he needs to, okay? So it's important you know what your equity is and, and on a, any given thing in your, in your business, any given instance in your business. And that's what a balance sheet is gonna give you, okay? The balance sheet is gonna tell you, these are your assets, these are your liabilities, this is your equity. So let's review quickly what we have discussed. What is equation, the equation commonly used? Assets equals liabilities plus equity. Remember assets are on the left-hand side and liabilities and equities are on the right-hand side. And this is called the accounting equation. What is the name of the equation commonly used? I just said it, accounting. The accounting equation is commonly used among businesses to help keep track of the money coming in and going out of the business. And you can see why, okay? 
What does double entry accounting show? It shows that it increases and decreases. So double entry means you have two postings for every, every, um, for every transaction, there are two postings done. There's one to the increase, whichever account it increases, whether it's be your liability account or your expense account or your asset account, but it's an increase and a decrease. Now, something that I wanted to bring to your attention, not every uh, accounting software uses a double entry accounting. And I learned this um, the hard way, so to say. It's not that it's wrong not using it, but it's a long, more long-winded process. So for someone that is starting in, in a small business, you want to look for a software that uses double entry accounting. It's easier for you on the reports to see what is happening, okay? So you keep that in mind when you're maybe shopping for, for um, accounting software to use in your business. When on paper, what letter does the double entry accounting look like? The letter T, we said that it, it's a double entry um because it's um it has one here one there so it's called a t account and let's see where i can put this that is not in the way there okay cash is what type of asset cash is tangible you can feel it you can hold it you can count it um you have the tangible you have the intangible so it can be physically touched while the intangible uh, cannot stop. It's not something that you can physically touch. It's something that you know it's there, but it can be many different things. And this is an intangible asset. Which of the following is a type of liability and is current liability? There are two types. There's the current and there's a long-term liability. Of the following, which is a type of liability and is the same. We have uh, long-term liability. Okay, here we have current, here we have long-term. These are not liabilities. What is most true of equity? Again, the answer is uh, once all debts are owed on the asset have been paid off, the owner then has ownership of that asset. Okay, while you have, um, while you have a building, even though yes, it can be an asset, it's not, if you owe any percentage of that building, then you don't have 100% ownership of that building. So the only part that, that would go into equity is whatever you have paid off. Remember in the house, if you owe 75%, then only 125% can be counted as equity because you don't own, own all of it. So it, it can still be um, for any, you know, anything can happen. Once you have 100% ownership of it, then you can say that it's, it's an equity. And what percentage of an asset does an owner hold once all debts associated with the asset have been paid off? Of course, 100. And there are no creditors who can lay, lay claim to the asset. The owner of the asset then holds 100% ownership or has 100% equity on that, okay? Um, so, <laughs> Sometimes we, we, we may have a house and we feel, oh yeah, you know, I own this house, I, I, I'm, I'm set. But if you just started your mortgage, you don't really own the house, the bank owns the house. So you want to build on that equity as much as possible, as, as, as quickly as possible as you can. Um, it, the same goes for any, any, any type of loan that you take. Um, yes, loans are inevitable. You, you need to take them many times, especially when you are starting a small business, um, especially in the times that we are now. And it's also always important to, to and we want to talk about this in cash management. Right now, um, SBA is giving loans to businesses at a very, very, very low interest rate with very generous um, pay, repayment plans. Um, so now would be, that's, that's a good thing to do, to get a loan now if you need money to, even if you're not gonna use that money right away, but you don't get that, that kind of um, interest rate and uh, relaxed payment plans as, as the ones we're getting now with COVID. Um, so we're talking about the idle loan, we're talking about the PPP loan, the payroll protection plan loan, 
So those are things that as, an, uh, as a business you want to seriously consider. Um, make sure that you know and understand what, they, what, what you can and cannot do with those, but they are definitely meant to help you now. So loans is not always bad. Um, okay. So let's talk about now other financial statements. In this unit, we're going to introduce the income statement, the cash flow statement, capital statement, and budget versus actual. All of these terms involve money or the use of money in some form. The income statement. So here we have a little sample of an income statement. You notice this is not a necessarily a T account. And here it says for the period ending, and we're gonna discuss that, but you have three things are reflected in your income statement. You're gonna have your income, you're gonna have your expenses, and then you're gonna have your net profit. So an income statement reports a corporation's net income for the period of the time indicated in its heading. The income statement is also known as the statement of income, statement of earnings, statement of operations, profit and loss statement, or simply PL. Many uh, banks are going to say, okay, we need a balance sheet and a PL. So when they say PL, basically it's a profit and loss statement, which is exactly what you're seeing here. So it summarizes your revenue. It's summer. And notice the, the term here summarizes. So this is going to give you the total of your revenue. It's not going to give you detail. It's not going to tell, it's not going to tell the bank. Um, this month I made this, this month I made that, this made, no. It's gonna give you total figures for everything under that heading. Summarizes revenue, summarizes expenses over a period of time, and it measures financial performance. This is a statement that will tell a bank a lot about you, as well as the balance sheet. Now, notice that's for the period ending. Many times that is going to compromise a, long, a longer period, okay? Um, balance sheet, we said is for one, one particular time, a snapshot today, a balance sheet today is going to tell you right now how your company is doing. And this is something that you want as an owner to know. A balance sheet is something that you can ask again. I emphasize a balance sheet is as good as the information that has been posted and it has been fed. So if your accounts are up to date, in the last um, session, we talked about the importance of doing your bank reconciliation sometime every month so that everything is captured. So that if you forgot to put an invoice or if you forgot to put a check that was written, it's captured when that bank statement comes in, when those, uh, that bank statement is gonna tell you all the, all the deposits that were made and maybe, oh, you noticed that you didn't put it one in. So it's very, very important that bank reconciliations are done on a monthly basis because then these reports, when they are done, when they are requested by the owner, when they're requested by the bank, will really reflect what is going on in a business, okay? So always keep that in mind. As, as an owner also, you have the responsibility of making sure that your accountant or your bookkeeper, in this case, your bookkeeper, um, has these things up to date. Uh, has um, the bank reconciliation been done? And uh, um, a good bookkeeper will not feel insulted if an owner asks that, okay? Because we know this is something we have to do. We have to do. Um, so it's, it's never feel uh, hesitant to ask for the things that are due to you as, a, as, your own, as the owner of the company, because these are things, as we're gonna talk about um, uh, cash management, you need to have, and you need to have them accurately so that you can make good decisions concerning your business. Cash flow statement. The cash flow statement reports a company's major sources and uses of cash during the same period of time as the company's income statement or PNL. In other words, it lists the major reasons for the change in a company's cash and cash equivalents reported on the balance sheets at the beginning and the end of the accounting period. The cash flow statement is needed because the income statement reports the revenues earned and the expenses incurred using the accrual method. We talked in the last session, cash versus accrual. 
if you didn't, uh, if you weren't here for that session, I strongly suggest that you go back and you go to the website and you go over that 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 session. Why uh, why use accrual? Why is accrual accrual considered a better, more accurate way of keeping of doing your accounting than cash? But is cash wrong? Not necessarily. But the accrual method. Um, Basically, whenever uh, a, an income is earned and an expense is incurred, it goes in the books. Now, that notice that when it's earned or incurred. However, many times you may have earned something because you went into a contract with someone and they said they will pay you $20,000 when you finish this contract. The minute you sign that contract under accrual, it goes in the books but you don't have those $20,000 as yet. With the cash, those $20,000 go in the book only when you put that deposit in the bank or when, you're, when you say, okay, it's in the bank, it's, 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 in my, it's in my pocket, so to speak. So that's a difference, okay? Um, but accrual method is the method preferred by most banking institutions and basically by the accounting world in general. However, most small businesses use cash, okay? So, um, there's not a right or a wrong. Um, one is better than the other because it gives you a clearer picture of where your business is. But we discussed that last week, so go over it, please, if you need a little more clarity on that. These amounts are different from the amount of cash received and paid. So your, your cash received, whether or cash earned, and expenses paid versus expenses incurred. That's the difference between the accrual and the cash. Also, the company's annual income statements might report 3% of a new building's cost as depreciation expense, but the company may have paid cash for 100% of the building cost in the year it was constructed. Since cash is critical for a company's operation and decision making, it's necessary to have the cash flow statement. So, um, cash flow basically, what it's going to say is why is there a change between one um one report and the other remember that you are the balance sheet is a snapshot it's a picture in time right now right today let's say you did a pnl in december 31st right and it shows your where your cash is and you're looking good you're happy then you get a a, a balance sheet let's say march 31st and you are looking like maybe in one you had a hundred thousand dollars and now all of a sudden you're poor fifty thousand dollars and you say in three months how could that have happened so when you do a cash flow you're going to see where that money went okay so it's an important an important report for any business owner the cash flow statement is organized into four major sections your operating activities. It converts the items reported on the income sta statement from the accrual basis to, of accounting to cash. Investing activities. It reports the purchase and sale of long-term investments and property, plant, and equipment. Financing activities. It reports the issuance and repurchase of the company's bonds and stock, the payment of dividends and borrowings and repayment of short-term and long-term bank loans and other debt. So keep in mind, maybe all of this does not apply to your company right now, but it will apply, hopefully, if you continue growing. So it's good to know it. Supplemental information reports the exchange of significant items that did not involve cash and reports the amount of income taxes paid and interest paid. Some investors believe that cash is king. The cash flow statement identifies the, the cash that is flowing in and out of the company. So even if you're in the accrual method, the cash flow statement is going to convert everything to cash. So what is here today and right now? If a company is consistently generating more cash than it is using, the company is going to be able to expand its operations, replace inefficient equipment, increase its dividend, buy back some of the stock, reduce its debt, or acquire another company. All of these are perceived to be good for a stockholder value. This is a report you will request from your accountant. I put this in bold and in red 
because this is not a report that you're going to request from your bookkeeper. Keep that in mind. The, in one of our previous sessions, we also spoke about the difference between an accountant and a bookkeeper. We are not accountants. We are bookkeepers. It's a very, there's a lot of difference. We deal with the in and outs every day of, of your business, of posting everything that is happening minute by minute, you know? The, the accountant takes a whole years of information that has been reduced to just a few lines and then he makes these reports and he, he looks at the company and he does a lot of other, he makes other decisions that are because he's been trained to do that, because he knows the laws, how they apply. We are not trained to do that. As a bookkeeper, we are trained to know, we should be trained to know what is a debit, what is a credit, what is an expense, what is income, what is not income, but it's still money coming in into the business, what taxes you need to pay, what, what taxes pertain to parole, what, what reports need to be done with payroll. This is what an, a bookkeeper does. So keep in mind, um, if you're asking this from a bookkeeper and the bookkeeper is <sighs> tries to give you this, you're not getting your money's worth and she's not doing you a favor. This should come from your accountant, bottom line. Capital statement. The capital statement is concerned with or keeps track of the items that are going to last for longer than a year, like long-term assets of your company, for example, buildings, okay? And you have a, 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 a copy of a capital statement here, okay? It's a document which presents the opening balance of the capital at the first line, then any kind of addition in the shape of investments, or profit earned during the accounting period is added in the next line, which in turn gives you the total balance of capital. So investments, net income, withdrawals, total balance. Deductions in form of withdrawals, withdrawals sorry, or loss of the business are then subtracted from the total balance of the capital arriving at the final balance of capital at the end of the accounting period. Again, this is a report that you obtain from your accountant. Okay, your accountant is the one that is trained to provide this type of reporting to you. Any questions? Okay, um, I, I apologize for going a little fast, but I'm kind of watching the clock for you. We promised you an hour and it's very close to the hour. So I'm trying to, to fit all the information so that you can have it. And you're also gonna have the, um, the PowerPoint, but we just wanted to discuss it. If you have any questions, feel free, please. Budget versus actual. Very, very important part of your business. Budgeting, planning for your future expenses, consider previous statements. The differences between the actual amounts occurring and the budgeted amounts are known as variances. These variances can also signal some new problems that need management attention. Budget is what you plan. Actual is when the expenses are incurred and there may be unexpected costs or changes. Um, as a business owner, this is something that you want to do at least once a year. You want to budget at any given time. If you're starting a new project, if you are opening a new store, if you're uh, introducing a new line in your in your retail, you want to budget versus actual. And at, at, at a given time, you want to then look at the actual to see how it compares. Because there will be variances, okay? Um, variances. Who thought COVID was going to come? Maybe in January, you sat down and you budgeted and you knew that we are in the middle of, of uh, tourist season and it looks good. So many cruise ships are coming, so many people are coming. And this, this is what you budget and this is what you think you're gonna be making. So down the road, you're gonna be able to get this or get that or expand. And bam, March comes and you have COVID and everything comes to a halt. So what do you have to do? Then you have to sit down and you have to go through that budget again and you have to see what your actual is, say in June, say in September, and you have to try to balance that out for the, for the health of your business, for the life of your business. 
an owner that has any type of business and do not does not budget and then compares it with the actual is looking for problems. The, um, so many things can be happening. So many things have could happen that, that impacts your business. It gives you, it's, it's good for you in both ways. If you budgeted to that you were going to be earning this and hey, it's good and you're earning double that, okay, well, what do I do with that extra money? How can I reinvest it in the, into the business? How can I expand? So then again, you budget and you, 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 you use that money. You don't just let it sit or, or the other way around. You budgeted and you were expecting this influx and what is coming is not that. So then you have to, to see how you're gonna be able to move around some of your assets, some of your cash so that you can keep your business afloat, okay? So think of it as a pie. You, you budget, you, you're cutting the pie, say, evenly. You have four rounds, four, four, uh, half, uh, four pieces. And then all of a sudden, something happened, and you have to start cutting those pieces a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, because you want to still have that whole pie, but you have to make um, variances. You have to make adjustments. So very important business owners, please take a look at your, at your income statement. Take a look at your cash flow, and then you can budget. And after you budget, give yourself a couple of months, give yourself six months. You know what your business, how often you should look at that, and then look at the actual and see where you're at and what adjustments need to be made so that your business can stay afloat, but not just stay afloat, but grow. Okay, that's what you want. Questions? Okay, be quiet. <laughs> Pretty so quiet. let's go. Ah, do quiet. <laughs> um, what does the income statement summarize? It summarizes revenue earned and expenses incurred. Okay, very simple. Income, um, uh, revenues, expenses, and net profit. Okay, it measures the company's performance over time. The income statement also includes which of the following. It includes how the company incurs its expenses and earns its revenue over time. One thing I wanna say, even though the income statement is gonna um, just put everything in one line, as a bookkeeper and you prepare the income statement, you can at any given time, or you should be able to at any given time, tell the either the owner or the accountant or whoever wants to know that you have permission to talk about it to what, what that one line is all about how how was how did that line come about okay how um if you say you receive an income of a hundred thousand dollars and um the accountant says yeah how how did that come in what is that what is that made of and you'll say well sales on this day were like this or this month we got this and that other whatever you know so as a as a bookkeeper you're supposed to know these details because you are the one putting in this information so you should be familiar with that information and you can always run a return in, in quickbooks is a very user-friendly uh software and you can run countless of of reports in in quickbook um quickbooks as long again as you post the information in the first place and you post it correctly, okay? So um, the income statement, the PNL is only gonna give you one line, but as a, as a bookkeeper, you should know everything that made up that one line. Let's put it that way. How many financial sta statements are there? We talked about four, cash flow, balance sheet, income statement, and statement of retained earnings. Cash flow statements show what? It shows you how the money comes in and how it flows out of the company. Very important statement, very important financial statement to know. As the name states, this statement shows the activity of money in both, both directions, in and out of the company. Capital statement keeps track of items that last for longer than one year. Items that last longer than one year are considered long-term items. Buildings, for example, is, is, is a long-term item. What is an example of something that would be on a capital statement? And we just said building. Any of these other things here, ream of paper, pens and pencils, print, printer or cartridge, all these things are not gonna last you 
um, uh, once you start uh, uh, doing, um, once you start taking out the value, it, it's not going to last you a year. It, it might last you physically a year, but the, the value of it is not. Items that last longer than one year are considered long-term items. Buildings are an example of that. Depreciation is the word that I wanted. What is budget in regards to financial statements? Is the amount planned for ahead of time, okay? Not the amount that was realized, is the amount planned for ahead of time. And the actual is the amount that was actually realized, okay? So that's why it's so important that you have a budget and then you compare that budget at any given time with the actual. So you know how you need to tweak it. Okay. What are we going to consider next week? We're going to be talking about payroll accounting and terminology. Uh, we're going to talk about employer tax expenses, employee taxes, reporting that has to be done whether it be on a monthly or on a quarterly and an annual basis. Um, end of period procedures, we're gonna talk about depreciating your assets. We're gonna talk about a little bit more about reconciliations, bad debt, posting adjustments and corrections. Okay, so these are the things that we're gonna talk about next week. Um, I, again, my apologies for we, are, we went kind of a little fast on this one. It's going to be posted. It's going to then be in your face on the Facebook and the uh, SPDC uh, YouTube channel. You can review it. Please, if you haven't seen the others before that, go ahead and do it. Uh, so you have a rounded view of, of um, what you need as a business owners, what you need to know about your business. And as a bookkeeper, what you need to be able to provide for any client that you have. These are things that we need to know. And if we don't know them, talk to the accountant. I had an, an excellent meeting um, as earlier this week with an accountant and I'm really happy when accountants are willing to meet with the bookkeepers. Many times, you know, we don't talk. <laughs> so, but we should talk because he was able to bring out to me, it's a new client and he was able to tell me, um, listen, the bookkeeper before she was doing this and this, I don't really need all of that. I, I don't, you know, unless you feel that it's it. And, and he was, he was um, professional enough to say, if you feel that you need it for your information, okay, but when you give me the end of your reports, I don't need all of that information. I just need the bottom line. So it was a really good conversation that we had. And um, so as a bookkeeper, you should be able to talk to the accountant and um, discuss the accounts. And if you have a question as to where to post something correctly, you should be able to talk to the accountant, okay? So that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed and that you learned, more importantly, that you learned something new, uh, that it was beneficial for you. Um, we do have two quick questions that we want, poll questions that we wanted to ask you. Um, if and Mary Jo, would you be doing those? No, Ms. Sharika Industrious will be putting up the poll questions for us. Okay. Ms. Sharika, if you can, please. And the poll question is, um, do you anticipate attending the next webinars? We have two more left in the series. Mm -hmm. And the other question is, in terms of the level of the presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So based on the information you received today, how likely are you to complete the five part series? Are you most likely, likely or not at all? If you could answer the poll and then we could get a quick tally and share with the group, that would be fabulous. All right, and the answers are coming in hot and heavy. Mm -hmm. And based on our poll, 92% of the people are most likely to attend. percent uh, are likely and 0% said they're not going to attend. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm very happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that. Um, and remember, you can always review the others. Uh, the level of the presentation. 
was it too easy, just right, or too difficult? And we'll allow Miss Industrious to put up the results. A hundred percent of the people say that it was just right. Ah, you made me happy. <laughs> you made my day. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm really happy to hear that. Um, and again, my information is there. My contact information is there. Any questions, feel free to email me. Okay. Um, remember, we all, you also have SPDC. You have many business consultants in SPDC. They have all this information as well. So you can always um, talk to them as well. The other thing we were going to ask is where are you located? Okay. Are you on St. Croix, St. Thomas, St. John, Water Island, Puerto Rico, or other? And just so we'll know where the counselors are going to have to work hard. <laughs> okay, 46% of the people that responded are located on St. Croix, 46% of the people are located on St. Thomas, and yay, we have 8% of our participants that answer the poll from Water Island. Oh, nice, nice. Very nice, nice. very nice. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I hope to see you next week. Um, again, we try to make it interactive. Any questions, feel free to post them in the chat and, and Mary Jo or Sharika will bring it out. Um, I want to, I feel kind of funny when I continue talking and I don't hear from you because I wanna make sure that you're getting what is being considered, the, 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 the whole, you know, the whole issue of this is so that you can understand the information and you can uh, leave feeling that, that you learned something. Um, so please feel free to, to comment and to even just, you know, letting me know something. Uh, it could be that I, I, I misrepresented something, it could happen, um, we are imperfect. But so, you know, bring it out to the attention or if there's other subjects that you feel that I should have spoken a little more at length on, I would really love to hear about that as well. So thank you very much again for coming. I am happy that you're here with me and um, see you next week. Okay, well, before you guys run away, I have a little bit of information for you. The, on, on Tuesday next week, we will be featuring Mr. Wayne Huddleston and we will be talking about the Paycheck Protection Program title. Okay, and for those of you that are currently in business, the Paycheck Protection Program deadline is um, 31st. And so, and the, the local lenders will not be keeping their portals open until March 31st. So you'll need to get your applications in as soon as possible, hopefully probably by the Friday, so that uh, the lenders will have a chance to work on them and hopefully you'll qualify for some of those funds. And the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, that program ends in December, but it's better for you to apply sooner than later if you're interested in that. And then on Monday, we have a presentation by uh, the Disability Rights Center of the Virgin Islands, where we're gonna talk about the ADA primer, and it's gonna cover some of the inform pertinent information from the Americans with Disabilities Act. And then on Wednesday, we have um, the Disaster Recovery and Resiliency Series, and it's going to be uh, from e-commerce, from brick and mortar to click and mortar, and it's going to focus on e-commerce. And then on Thursday, we have the second in a series of our government contracting, and we will feature um, the local Department of Planning and Prop Property and Procurement, and they'll talk about doing business with the local government. And then um, Thursday afternoon, we will be right back here with Ms. Carmen Acevedo Adams and basic bookkeeping. So we have a full week ahead of us. We hope all of you will join us. We hope that you will tell folks about us and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much for attending. And on behalf of the state director 
uh, Mr. Ted Gutierrez and the fabulous staff on St. Croix and St. Thomas at the SBDC. I include myself as a part of that fabulous staff. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next week. Have a good one.